Success, guys, a very, very lonely road, man. Very few people are willing to endure the pain, the sacrifice, the diligence to be successful. It's an uphill battle. And along that road, you're not going to see too many friends. You're going to see your shadow most often. You got to trust in the heart of hearts inside what you're doing, what you believe in. It's a worthy cause, a winnable fight. See, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they failed. As you walk this journey, you're gonna see carcasses all over the place of people that didn't quite have it. That should inspire you, but you got further than that person, than that person. But you're not looking to get further than them, you're looking to finish. How do you know you're on the right path? Where do you go to ensure that? Success, many will love you for it. The majority will hate you. Because your success makes them feel insufficient in their current endeavor. Reminds them of where they could have done it but they came up short and how they didn't revisit it. Where they went at it and failed and failure is what stood and never revisited it again. The difference between a winner and a loser, the failure is there every single time. It's just the winner gets back up and does it again. It does it again until it goes his way. So now you're down that path and you're all alone. How do you know you're on the right path? How do you know what you're doing is in the right direction? pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil the only way to do it was to go outside the box so don't be afraid to go outside the box don't be afraid to think outside the box don't be afraid to fail big to dream big but remember dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals. Life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. You have to work at it. Every day, you have to plan. Every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. Doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that, just because you're doing a lot more, doesn't mean you're getting a lot more Done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you've been running place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. 
work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back, pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. If it's what you love or it's something that you're passionate about, please stick with it and please stick with your education because it will open so many doors. And do not be intimidated by wanting to be someone or something where you don't know anyone else like you who is that. I didn't know anyone in my family or in my community that was a doctor. And I didn't know any women that were heart surgeons when I wanted to become a heart surgeon. Nonetheless, anyone Aboriginal that was a heart surgeon. but. I saw myself doing it, I wanted to do it for me, and so I pursued it. So as crazy as your dream or goal may be, uh, don't let that intimidate you and don't let that stop you from going after it. back yes about five hours later we figured so it's now just after five in the morning and the last time I slept was 24 hours ago really and so this is this is the life of a resident yes and how did things go in there it went well it was definitely a little bit longer than expected we spent the last four and a half hours in an operating theater just down the hall from here uh, with a patient who was quite sick and definitely needed an emergency operation in the middle of the night. Today I feel okay at the moment, partly because it's been about eight days, I think, maybe 10 days since the last time I did 24 hours. The month before, I had one stretch where I did seven in a row. So for 14 days straight, every other day, I was in hospital for anywhere from 26 to 30 hours. You develop a little bit of resistance to it on one sense. You sort of learn how to cope. You learn sort of tricks that allow you to function better. So, you know, for instance, in the evening, I'll try to most call shifts somewhere between nine and midnight. I wash my face, brush my teeth, put on dry socks and new shoes for the night because I can't wear the same pair of shoes for 24 hours. That just drives me crazy. Some people will bring stuff and their showers available in the operating room. So they'll come and at you know five in the morning before we start rounding in the day, they'll come and have a shower and put on clean scrub clothes and then come up and you just sort of find ways to make, to adapt to it and make yourself feel a little bit more human, I suppose. Sure. These are my favorite doors. I want to do this every time I walk by them. <laughs> Because <laughs> they just open. I should think you have enough of a feeling of power being a surgeon. <laughs> no, 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 I'm a resident. There is a very distinct difference between having power and not. <laughs>